All right. Um, thanks for coming this intro training session. Uh, my name is Song Park, and I'm very excited to invite you and give you these lectures. I can promise you that this 1.5 hour will be very beneficial for both you and me. Uh, please take a listen to my lecture very carefully. And if you have any questions, just let me know through my email. Uh, my email address is swpark at midasuser.com. Also, you can send me an email through ts at midasuser.com. So once you become our client and start off using Midas Civil, you might wonder how to start this program and what would be the proper way of using this program. From those points, me and my colleagues invented this intro training. We have gotten many queries every day basis. However, especially from our starting users, the primary concern has been how to create a model properly to get the reasonable analysis values. <clears throat> For example, the model as shown here is one of the queries I got the other day. Why the deformed shape looks strange. The concrete deck drops down vertically so much between gutters even after the concrete and steel gutters are composited. There was no mistake in defining loads or construction stage analysis, but this bridge was improperly assumed and designed. It was very tedious for my client and me to go over over 1,000 nodes and element, and it took more than two hours to figure out what was the problem. In order for you to avoid this kind of mistake, you need to understand basic concept but very necessary and how to apply it to Mida Civil to create a model without mistake to save your time. So the objectives in this presentation comes from the fact that rhyme modeling practice obviously leads us to getting reasonable analysis values. In order for you and me to get to this point, we need to study first what is the general modeling sequence in Mida Civil. And as this presentation goes to the end, you will notice that all the topics I will cover will be connected and illustrated to support the modeling sequence in Mida Civil. It is also very important for you to know how to apply the basic concept to be explained to it today into the real application of Mida Civil along with the modeling sequence. Um, let me briefly go over the sequence of modeling a bridge. Creating a primary bridge model with a node and element is the first step. Next, you will check whether your model is well made without errors. If you find any errors, you need to revise them. Unfortunately, you may step into endless loop between check and revise step over and over again if you don't understand MIDA civil very well. Afterwards, your mathematically assumed model will be completed and go to analysis process. Today, I will be very focused on create, check, and revise steps. More specifically, my duty is letting you know how to disconnect the loop in your modeling sequence by giving you direct understanding of Midas Civil so that the analysis part will be covered in the next intro training sessions. Please join the next intro training sessions. I have kept saying understanding of Midas Civil is very important in the previous slides. So what would be the significant concept in the Midas Civil to model a bridge properly strictly following the modeling sequence? First, even before starting off uh, creating a, mo a model, you need to understand how to start new project and the basic frame of Midas Civil, which menus are contain which functions and tools. Secondly, node and element are a major frame of a bridge model. Node and elements are needed to be properly selected and located in the process of creating a bridge model. Next, selection and view options are very powerful tools that you can check whether nodes are duplicated, which leads to singular error, or whether your element contains proper section and material properties. There are many tools you need to utilize professionally. Next, coordinate system is also important to know. In Mida Civil, there are different coordinate systems you have to know because node and elements are expressed 
through the coordinate system, you definitely need to understand different coordinate system to fully use MIDAS tool. The faster modification in the revising step depends on how much you understand the coordinate system while in MIDAS tool. So the summary what I'm going to talk about today is uh, first explaining the basic frame of GUI graphic user interface with how to start MIDAS tool. Secondly, I will summarize the concept of node and element and what is the key point you need to know. Next, I will talk about three different coordinate systems. Finally, I will go over the basic concept again by using MIDAS Civil and show you what are the real application by using an example model. <clears throat> now I will be I will be uh, focused on graphic user interface and show you what's the tips for starting MIDAS Civil. As soon as you open up Midas Civil, you can see the fire button. From here, from here, you can start off Midas Civil by clicking New Project or pressing New Project icon right next to File button. Also, if you need to open up the model files previously worked, you can click Open Project or uh, select a file among the recent document history. Never forget, click Close Project as soon as your work in Midas Civil is done. If not, afterwards, you could not open the project file properly and you need to send an email to us to request this connection. Also, importing and export, exporting files are available in file menu. Um, the general overview of the basic frame in Mira Civil is like as shown here. Under Fire button, main menu is located on the top. Under main menu and the very right side of the Midas Civil window, icon menu exists for user's convenience. All the functions on the icon menu are extracted from main menu, which has been clicked most frequently from our users. On the right and left side, you can see the task pane and tree menu. Between tree menu and task pane, you can find the table window and model view. Under the model view, Message window exists and status bar also. Uh, my challenge to this presentation was breaking down node and element because I think this concept is hard and the most important. First of all, I will explain how and what is the fundamental node and element property in Midas Civil. Secondly, with a micro perspective, node locations. Um, in a section will be explained. Finally, with a macro perspective, how node and elements are expressed in the user interface and what is the trick of them. Um, node is the essential component to illustrate a bridge model. Most of models starts from creating and arranging nodes. From more than two nodes, beam, plate, solid element can be defined. For example, beam element contains two nodes at the end of element, which are called I end and J end. The plate element contains four nodes or three nodes at the edge point of a plate. Solid element contains a node, as you can see here. The node plays a very important role to connect the same element when the more segments are required, or to connect two different elements. There are many different types of elements. Each element has different resisting availability to different types of force and moment. More details are explained in online help menu. While you're working with Midas Civil, simply pressing F1 key or buttons and you can check the, all the information you need uh, from the online help menu. Um, what types of information can be included in node and element? First of all, as shown here, each node and element have, uh, has their own identity by being numbered. Secondly, element type can be also defined with various element types, such as truss, general beam, tension only, or compression only, so on. 
Furthermore, material and section properties can be defined and stored in node and element. As you create the nodes and element, please keep in mind uh, defining for information with a proper manner. Uh, why node locations are important to be defined properly in section properties? Let's look at an example as shown here. The two examples contain same material and section properties. However, as you can see here, due to a uh, lack of understanding in node and location, in node location in section property, in the bad, in the bad example, the two interior girders uh, goes up a little bit compared to the two exterior girders. Even the nodes are located on the same elevation, um, when you are modeling a steel composite gutter bridge, you should keep in mind that nodal location on different gutters should be on the top center to avoid the transversely uh, fluctuating deck like in the bad example. So my question is how to modify the nodal location vertically and horizontally in the section property. This, pro uh, this process takes place when you're defining section properties Go to Section tab and select Section Property. Once you open up the Section Data dialog box, you can find the node location generally at the bottom of the box, which is called Change Offset. Click uh, Change Offset and uh, change the location from Change uh, from Change Offset box. The easiest way is to click Offset drop box and select the location where you want. Uh, reflecting the previous example, you might want to select the center top for steel composite sections. Also, center location can be selected at either centroid, which means uh, neutral axis location or center of section, really one half of the section height. More specifically, at the horizontal offset and vertical offset, you can also define the reference line. Two extreme fiber is the most outer surface on the top in vertical offset and on the left uh, in horizontal offset. Furthermore, if you have a tapered, tapered section, you can also define the node location at I end and J end. Finally, before uh, close this box, by clicking display offset point at the bottom, you can check where is a red box dot, which will represent the node location in a section. <clears throat> now let's get started with uh, creating nodes. Uh, first of all, on the blank uh, whiteboard, after clicking create node button, you can set up the coordinate x comma y comma z. Generally, it starts from 0 comma 0 comma 0. From here, if you have an idea that how many times you will duplicate the nodes, punch a number on the number of times box. After that, you can freely set the distance between nodes at three directions, x comma y comma z. Uh, most importantly, always you better to check on the box on merge duplicate nodes and intersect frame element to avoid a singular error. If their two nodes are duplicated on the same coordinate, um, by the civil will make two nodes as one node, or if their uh, two elements are intersected, by the civil automatically let the two elements intersect it and creating one node at the intersecting point. Also, you can copy and move the node uh, at transverse, uh, at translate uh, node element button. Uh, in this function, copying the node is available at equal distance or unequal distance. Um, largely, there are three different coordinate system. Global coordinate system, um, nodal local axis and element local axis. Global coordinate system use the uh, capital X, comma Y, comma Z axis of the conventional uh, Cartesian coordinate system with the uh, right hand rules. You have learned this concept in your engineering school, so I'm not going to explain the basic concept. However, I will put more time on node local axis and element local axis. Why might a civil invented the two more coordinate system and uh, what they are and uh, how you can use them. Um, in global coordinate system, axes are expressed as shown here on the 
user interface and abide the capital letters x, y, z in the table information and the task of pane. If the bridge is straight, straight without any curve or irregular geometry shape, users are totally fine to use just global coordinate system. However, engineers frequently face to various geometry shapes. How can you deal with the irregular geometry shape or a layout to define proper support condition and get right stress or force values? The answer are in the node local axis and element local axis. Node local axis axis uh, are used for defining boundary condition such as support or point spring um, or point spring support so on. As shown here in the curved bridge, to obtain proper reaction along with the tangential to the curved line and reactions with radial direction, global coordinate system cannot be used. In this case, we need to define node local axis to get the proper reactions with the proper uh, directions because support axis uh, follows the load local axis. As you can see here, um, curved line have different element local axis. When you jump into design practice, uh, practice you definitely need a cross section perpendicular to the proceeding curved line in the each element to get axial force, shear force, or bending moment. Here, if you use global coordinate system, you cannot get the true forces or moment value from the non-perpendicular cross section to the curved line. So element local axis need to be uh, defined for the right force and moment values. Uh, from the demonstration, let me first go over the GUI element view and activation options, also dynamic view options. Let me switch to the Midas Civil. So uh, let me open up the Midas Civil right now. Give me a second, uh, I need to adjust uh, some screen resolution. All right, um, I'm ready to start demonstration here. So once you open up the Midas Civil, you can see this uh, graphic user inter interface. Uh, I wanna point out the license first. Once you click this button, register protection key here. And here is a two different license, web license and a hardware license. But these days I heard that uh, in 2015, we are, pro we are providing web license. So first of all, you need to create your user ID and password. So first of all, if you don't have your user ID password, you can just click the create a new account on here and you can make uh, your account on here. And uh, <clears throat> punch the proper protection key ID and uh, never forget to click the select product. It take a little bit time. So once you open up the program licensing configuration dialog box, you can see the PID on here. Select the PID and uh, just select the options on here. And the URL, like a PID is changed from um, if you buy uh, more license or if you buy uh, like a more low, uh, modules or higher, higher analysis tools, it will be changed. So please, uh, you know, click the update button here. So we are ready to move on to my receiver right now and click yes.
And uh, let me open up the uh, one example. So first of all, um, I want to check the unit system. So as you can see here on status bar, you can instantly change your force unit and length unit on here. But how can you set up the default unit, uh, default unit system? How can you set up the default your, your like a uh, unit system? Go to tools and then click the unit system on here. As you can see here, length, force, heat, and uh, don't forget. Don't forget to check on this box. Set and change default unit system on here. And click this one and click OK. And uh, your like a unit system will be um, like a change to the like a default setting as I did. And the next one is uh, I want to point out the preference on here. So go to uh, like a property and select the your like a proper standard. I mean, if you are in the US, you might want to select the ASTM and uh, also concrete ASTM. And I'll go to design, all the design code and a uh, load rating code H2 LLFD, H2 LLFR uh, should be selected in proper way. This one is a deferred setting for you. So now uh, let's move on to um, how you can rearrange the menu windows. So here, uh, let me just uh, move this message window to the top. So once you are pressing your button and uh, move up to the top, uh, you can see the blue box. Once you see the blue box, just, just release your uh, mouse button and uh, it goes to the top. And uh, again, I will move down to the down. So in my civil, you can use uh, two or uh, three menus, but most of users does not know how to turn on the uh, second tree menu. Uh, this is very easy. Go to icon menu bar and I'll uh, click the right click and you can turn on and turn off a uh, tree menu. like this. Also, how can you use the dynamic view options? So here, this is dynamic view options. So first of all, uh, I, will I will explain zoom in and out. So once you click this button, zoom in, as you can see, the bridge uh, like uh, gets larger and larger. Once you click the zoom out, it gets smaller and smaller. Also, um, if the bridge is uh, like uh, larger than whiteboard, you can just click the zoom fit. It will automatically um, like uh, get back to the original shape. And also here is a pen options. Click this button and you can move your bridge model from left to the right and right to the uh, left. Also, you can see the hidden view by using rotation view on here. You can freely rotate your model. Also, uh, let me turn on the node on here. Go to display and uh, find the node tab on here. So as you can see here, this is uh, you have to uh, check on this box to see the node. Click this uh, node box and click apply. As you can see here, those, all the nodes are displayed on here. And uh, in order to see the connection between node and element, you can also use uh, these buttons, uh, shrink buttons. Once you click this one, as you can see here, uh, there is a gap between the node and element. This element 
is just one. It's not like a, it's not like a connected. It's not a continuous element. Uh, also, you can um, use the element selection and element element activation. So, how can you select your element and node? So, this is a single selection. Uh, this is for uh, selecting a single node or element. So, once you click this one, and I'll just uh, select the one element on here, and it is a red highlighted. Also, if you want to activate or if you want to just see this element, just uh, activate using activate uh, button, as you can see here. And also in here, if you want to see node number and element number, uh, turn on this button. Display node numbers, uh, it says 853 and 921. And also you want to check uh, this element number, uh, turn on this button. This one says uh, 1501. And uh, my uh, final question in um, GUI is how can you uh, see the real shape, real your like a uh, bridge model shape? So first of all, I will activate R and turn off the node number and element. And I click the turn on the hidden button on here. As you can see, you can see the uh, you can see the rear uh, shape of the bridge, and uh, how can you change the color? Uh, different section uh, has different colors, so this one is very easy. Go to view, uh, click display, and uh, click again display options, and uh, go to draw, and uh, click section and thickness color, and uh, click the random color and apply it. Now, um, I want to explain how to import AutoCAD file and Revit file into Mida Civil. Uh, go to import and click the, uh, before uh, I need to close this project, Okay, and I'll uh, open up the new project. Um, now I will just uh, import a file from the AutoCAD. So go to import and uh, select the AutoCAD DXF file. And here you can find uh, your um, AutoCAD file on here. I already made uh, one file. And a curved top girder pre-stress bridge DXF file. Double click this one. As you can see here, um, here contains all layers. And if you wanna <coughs> bring this exterior uh, girder line to the Mida Civil, uh, move to uh, selected layers. In here, you can also define the material and section property. And also, you can define the original point and you can rotate with the uh, X axis and Y axis and G axis. Now I will um, import this uh, Revit file to Mida Civil. So I convert this Revit file to the MCT files. So more details in online help menu, you can just refer to that. And uh, I will just uh, demonstrate uh, whether it is work or not. Uh, click the Mida and Civil MCT file. And as you can see here, it's the exactly same the Revit file. Now, um, 
let's move on to um, uh, creating node and a check and revising steps uh, from the scratch. Let me open up the new project again. So from the scratch, I will create a node and an element, and uh, you know I will give you I will give you the understanding of how to uh, copy and paste. I mean the copy and move your node and element on the whiteboard. And uh, at definer, like in revising step, I will show you how to change your section property by using tree menu and a table window. Uh, first, let me create a 10 nodes on here. So go to node and element and uh, select the create node on here. And the coordinate system, the default is 0, 0, 0. And uh, I will just make the uh, 10 feet span with 10 segment. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. So number of times should be 10. And a distance will be longitudinal direction. I mean, the, that is x direction on minus civil. So punch the 10 for dx. And never forget to check on the merge duplicate node and intersect frame element. And hit apply. And uh, to see all 10 nodes, click the zoom fit on here. And let's move on to uh, creating element. Once you click the create element button on here, you can see those informations. Uh, by cre uh, when you're creating your uh, element, you can also define the material and section properties. So click the dot 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 button on here, or you can go to property tab and uh, define the material or section property on here. But today I'm gonna just use dot 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 uh, box on here. So I'm gonna use a, I'm gonna make the PSC uh, eye girder. So the material property will be um, 4,000 PSI concrete. And sections. Let me uh, create the um, PSC eye first. Also here uh, we have a library on here. Uh, I'll, today I will just select the Ashto, uh, Ashto type number five, and click OK. And now I'm going to uh, make the composite section. So go to composite tab and uh, click the sec uh, section type Dropbox on here, and then select the composite I. Here you don't need to define the, you don't need to punch all the number again. Here you can just click the import button on here and select and import. But here um, I better to use uh, like inch as length unit. So let me close this one surely and uh, change this one as an inch unit. And I'll go to section property tab again and uh, click the section a uh, section property button and I'll uh, add like a composite sections. So <clears throat> under composite section tab, select the type composite dash I, and I click the import, and I click the edge to type number five one here. And you can see the numbers are punched on here. Now um, let's define the effective width of the deck. So effective width is 110 inch, and the thickness of the deck, deck is 8.5, and hunch height is zero. Also, you need to define the node location on vertical direction or horizontal direction on here. So I'm gonna change to um, offset, center to top, and click display offset point. Uh, give me a second. Oh, before then, I need to uh, define the material property on here. So grade C4000, grade C4000 again, and click OK. 
and again go to change offset and click the display offset point just make sure red dot is on the top of the surface and click ok oh i need to uh define the name Now you create a properties, section properties and material properties. So here I'm going to select the composite eye and click the very first node on here all the way through um, the uh, final, I mean the 10th node on here. As you can see here, you can just check uh, whether uh, the like a gold line is made well or not. Uh, through the whiteboard on here and also you can uh, translate this element I mean the copy uh, to the different uh, locations so first of all go to top and uh, select all the gold lines and give me a sec go to node and element tab and uh, click the translate element button on here here you can use uh, equal distance on on equal distance. So today I'm gonna use a uh, equal distance. So <clears throat> distance with like a positive y direction would be 55 inches. And I'll uh, select the uh, check on the copy node attribute and copy element attribute on here. And also number of times will be uh, four. So as you can see here, five color lines are created. Now, how can you uh, change the section property by using tree menu and table window? First of all, you need to um, go to tree menu here. And here contains all the material and, material and section property. So just select the element number five on here. and change this composite eye section to edge to time number five just uh click and drag and drop to the whiteboard as you can see here sections uh this section is changed and also you can change this one through table window first let's op let's open up the uh, element table double click this element and if you want to see the model view and uh table window at the same time you can just uh click the uh go to tab and uh click the title vertical on here so i'm gonna change this element number one to um this one is a composite eye section i will change it to section number two uh excuse me section number two is composite eye section and Section number one is edge to time number five. So I will change this one to edge to time number five. So go to element number one. And uh, change the property number on here. As you can see here, the section, uh, this section is changed. And finally, let me go over what we provide for our clients. We have intro training, as you can see here. It is dedicated to engineers who recently uh, become our users and covers the fundamental modeling and analysis feature of Midas Civil. We highly recommend our new users to join this training because we understand the difficulty and frustration from learning something new, especially software. Uh, this training will help you to understand what Midas Civil is. Mida Civil is and how it works and its engineering capability. Uh, I'm going to uh, open the second intro online training. So please join the intro online training again. And uh, secondly, advanced training for active users. Step by step training for modeling and analysis approaches are performed by one of our technical engineers. 
Lastly, uh, Elite Engineer webinar. Guest speakers share their modeling and analysis application used in their uh, commercial project. I will cover advanced training and Elite Engineer Engi Elite Engineer webinar in more details in next few slides. So as of today, we've already done four sessions of advanced training. Every session cover a uh, different topic and provide detailed modeling and analysis guide. Next training session is on coming Thursday, September 10th, uh, regarding a uh, pre-stress composite gutter bridge. Download this uh, PDF and click on specific table number. It will directly uh, guide you to corresponding web page where you can find a uh, recorded video and a presentation file for past sessions and registration page for upcoming ones. Elite Engineering Webinar is scheduled once every month. Senior structure and bridge engineers from various engineering firms uh, join us and uh, share their uh, real-time application of Midas Civil to their project. This month's uh, webinar is on Tuesday, September 22nd, and we have Dr. Ken Lee from Jacobs going over load rating setup and check for post-tension concrete bridge. One hour PDH certification is also provided for this event. So definitely don't want to miss out. Uh, this is our contact information after this session. If you have a if you have a something unclear, please let us know through the email shown here. Thanks for listening and I hope that all of you have a great day. Thank you.